Hi friends, Nick from NLB here and today I'm going to speak and show you a quick fix or a workaround for a um, problem that uh, was recently uh, introduced to me. So uh, in the past few months uh, Microsoft uh, found that there could be a uh, vulnerability uh, within their remote desktop connections. Basically it's related to a remote called execution vulnerability and uh, what they did is uh, with the May updates they have patched this vulnerability which could cause a problem with uh, accessing servers uh, as you can see right here. So uh, within this one my client has been patched with the latest updates but the server on the other hand has not been so this basically blocks the ability uh, for me to remote desktop to this server so I'm going to show you what uh, is uh, actually a workaround that you can do on the client temporarily until you patch all of your environment with the latest updates so you can be fully protected from this uh, vulnerability so for the purpose of this video, I will use my Windows 10 client machine as a normal um, client that I want to remote uh, to a server. And for the server part, I'm going to use my domain controller. So all the changes that I'm going to do are going to be um, applied on my Windows 10 client. So uh, the client has been fully patched with the latest updates. So I'm going to just uh, temporarily disable um, the um, latest security updates so we can be allowed to jump on a non-secured server which has not been patched yet and just initiate the patching process uh, from there. So like I said, uh, the full resolution fix is to fully patch both the client and the server to be able to uh, remove this vulnerability from uh, the RDP connection. But um, in most cases, how would you be able to connect to the server, for example, to schedule the, the update, to schedule the actual patching? So if you're not using any third party or Microsoft related products to patch your servers and you're doing it manually, one of the uh, alternative workarounds that you can use, which is a temporary workaround and I really don't recommend for you to uh, leave it the way it is, this is only temporary that will help you, your client, to gain access to the servers which have not been yet patched so what you need to do is go to the client that is affected and uh, the first one is to edit the group policy uh, the local group policy on the client which will uh, allow you to access the servers so you need to go to the local group policy then under computer configuration administrative templates system and then credential delegation, uh, if I can see it, credential delegation, and right on the right side, there should be uh, the encryption or remediation setting that at the moment is not configured. So within the patch, um, this was changed to um, mitigated instead of vulnerable so um, although it's not configured um, we'll have to enable that uh, local setting and select the vulnerable state which again I recommend for you to change as soon as you patch your environment and when you change this and try to connect to the server that has not yet been patched you should be able to access the system Okay, so as you can see, I'm now remoting into uh, my domain controller, which uh, have uh, has not been updated yet. So if I sign out, so I can show you and change the setting back to not configured. I can try to connect with remote desktop once again. And if I specify the password, You can see I received the error. So this is one of the workarounds that you can use. Just enable this and set it to vulnerable as a temporary measure. Update the server, then return to not configured and you should be good to go uh, with uh, the vulnerability. The second workaround that I want to show you if you are not able to access the uh, local group policy settings is you can use uh, the registry 
to edit the settings it's going to basically create the same thing for you so let me go right on the top it's going to basically create the same thing for you it's going to allow uh, this um, Oracle uh, execution to be uh, into a vulnerable state but uh, again this is a temporary thing that you need to remove when when complete so you need to go to local machine and I just want to tell you that uh, working with registry is a bit dangerous so be careful what you do go to local machine and then uh, software then Microsoft Expand Microsoft, then Windows. Then current version. Then policies. Okay. Then system. Then in here, you will need to create a new uh, key basically. So the first thing I'm going to create a new key which is going to be cred SSP and within this one we will need to create another one which is going to be called parameters. So within the um, parameters key we'll need to create another D word value which is going to be called allow encryption oracle and the encryption value needs to be into a decimal and the value should be 2 so this stands for the second option which is vulnerable so if I try once again to connect to my domain controller and if I specify the password for it there you go you can see that um, I'm able to connect to my domain controller uh, and from here I will uh, I can go ahead and patch the server so after I patch the server um, I need to just uh, remove the key the entire key so and the sub keys so let me try once again just to show you that uh, now that I've removed this key I'm not able to connect because this uh, server has not yet, yet been patched. So um, once again this is just a temporary measure until you patch all your environment. I really recommend for you to go ahead and update everything so it can be fully protected but I hope that uh, this is going to help you in troubleshooting and just finding a workaround so you can um, update your environment. This was the quick video from, from Nick. Um, if you like it, you can always share and subscribe. Be careful when you add the settings in the registry and be sure that you remove all of the workarounds so you can be fully secured. Thank you very much for viewing and see you in the next video.